Richie Thomas, he was the staff counsel of the International Trade Commission. He was the staff counsel, counsel. He was the counsel at the International Trade Commission. That's where they were hearing the case. He was the guy who was representing, you know, supposed to represent the, the government official, one of the top legal advisors to the International Trade Commission, was supposed to represent the interests of American workers and industry, working for the Chinese. And uh, the last two person I found was Regina Vargo. She was the former United States trade representative, and she's married to Frank Vargo. Frank Vargo was the vice president of international trade at the National Association of Manufacturers. Vargo worked at the Commerce Department in charge of international trade issues. I only say that because I used to be the editor of New Technology Week, and I got to know a bunch of, um, this was back in the 80s, so I got to know a bunch of uh, Japanese journalists, and they always, 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 they always said, who's that person married to? That was always a big part of their story. So I started, that started becoming part of uh, what I paid attention to. So, so who, are, who are the American workers up against? The, the American workers are actually up against really, really powerful forces. And it's just true. It's not like, oh, this is conspiracy theory. This is, you know, uh, maybe cliche. You know, this is true. This is true. Um, as somebody who covers it, this, this is true. So in Washington, D.C., U.S., the workers' interests, the people who have jobs in America, they are represented by very few organizations. The labor unions, um, and they don't even represent, they represent a tiny fraction of the workforce in the United States. The labor unions, uh, the Alliance for American Manufacturing, there are a few small groups, United States Business and Industry Council. There's this Coalition for a Prosperous America. There's the American Manufacturing Trade Action Council. And then those are little, those are all kind of like noise. They're little bets. Working against their interests, though, however, are a tremendous array of people with a lot of money. A lot of money. And they 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 pull a lot of weight. And it's just true. Importers. The importers um, are not only just the people who just you know buy buy stuff, but the retailers. The retailers are extremely powerful. They have complete control now over the manufacturing. It used to be the manufacturing trade associations were kind of big important, but now it's the retailers are absolutely tremendously powerful. It's stunning. If they can save a penny on a pamper, they are going to save a penny on a pamper. And if they can save 40 cents on a bicycle seat, they're going to do that too. So they're going to find 40 cent savings anywhere they can and they go right overseas in a half a flash. So the importers. Newspapers. You don't read much about this in the newspapers. You don't read about it much in the newspapers. And or what you do read about in the newspapers is you read the, the editorial done by you know on, the, on their commentary page about why are these people arguing against free trade? We need free trade. The newspapers, when you open up the Washington Post and you see who advertises in the newspaper, you see Macy's and you see the retailers. And the retailers have a vested interest in this. And let me tell you, if you pay a quarter for the Washington Post, that does not pay for the circulation and subscription. That, that, that's not even the, the price of the newsprint. The newspapers have been very quiet, mum, on these issues. Mum. And I've had, I've had reporters who've worked for the Wall Street Journal, Business Week, Bloomberg, say, Richard, I envy you. You're allowed to cover the story. They don't allow me to cover the story of outsourcing and about what's happening in our country with uh, you know, the rise of China and its impact on the United States. Um, shipping companies. Multinational trade associations. So, uh, Ralph Gomery, who's the um, former president of the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, uh, brilliant mathematician. He was vice president of R&D at IBM. He talks about this. Every single chance he gets, he's a gentle, a gentle giant. He's um, incredibly articulate, and thoughtful, and cerebral. 
he says that the interests of America's corporations have diverged from the interests of America. Yet Congress and our governmental organizations are still still think that the interests of the corporations are aligned with the interests of the country, and they're not. They're not. If you look in the last year, the stock market, we were losing jobs a mile a minute. The stock market went this. It did. And the best year ever last year. And companies were profitable. If you look at how much their revenues, their revenues were going down, but their profits remained pretty, pretty good. They had profit margins of, you know, pretty high profit margins. And that's because they just fired Americans left and right. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Americans. The other thing Ralph Formers says, and again, he's really uh, one of my heroes. He's a really smart, thoughtful guy. The other thing that he says is that, kind of looking at our world from the 30,000 foot level, he says, for centuries, humans lived on family farms. And they were able to be sustenance farmers and, and survive. And if they weren't working the farms, they were working in craft industries. And then with the Industrial Revolution, they started working, and they started working for these big organizations to participate in the fruits of this economic system. They went to work for the big multinational, well, both big corporate companies, even like AT&T and, and you know, LTV and all these companies that supported you all. He said something profound has happened. Those people, those companies, have broken their social compact, is what he says, and they have abandoned America. And you now have literally millions of people who were dependent upon this corporate infrastructure, this economic in infrastructure, now will never be again dependent upon that. They will now, now what happens to these people? He has a big question mark. Now what happens to them? The millions of people who were dependent, this is a major structural change that's just taken place. This is a profound, major structural change that Americans are coming to grips with slowly. Too slowly. Because what replaces this system of companies just being able to globalize all their production and basically abandon our workforce? Okay, I'll wrap up here for just a minute. Uh, I'll give you a couple of... The president last night says, we're going to double exports. We're going to double exports. What does the United States export? Jobs. Jobs. <laughs> Hot air. Okay, so I listen to economists, but I, I kind of like these numbers that uh, the economists always ignore, like like machine tool consumption, and you know these numbers of like how big markets are, how much the U.S. percentage share of global markets are. But here, here's some numbers. The Port Import Export Reporting Service, PEERS, Port Import Export Reporting Service, is run by the Journal of Commerce. They track the TEUs. They, these are the container ships. They track who's importing them and who's exporting containers. They're able to get this through the Customs uh, Bureau. 